Hi, and welcome to Anchor Points. I'm Tony, your host, and in this lesson, we are going to be discussing a confidence or assurance in your salvation. And you might have a lot of questions, and I think that through this lesson, we can answer those. So let's get into it. First of all, I'd like to thank you for joining me, coming back. For those who uh, week in and week out come and see the videos that are being presented uh, in this channel, I appreciate you coming back each and every week. And if this is your first video, would you uh, hit that uh, subscribe button and that bell notification, and you can get uh, notified when I upload new videos. And I appreciate you being here as well. I'd like to open up with a couple verses uh, <clears throat> in verse sec, um, sorry, in Second Peter 1, 3, and 4. According to his divine power, he's given us all things to pertain to life and godliness, to the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue, whereby you're given, given us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these things we might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that, in the, that is in the world through lust. Do you agonize or do you question, have some questions in your mind saying, do I have, uh, do I really have faith or do I, is my faith real? Is my faith solid? Is my faith this or that? Uh, and while these questions might be important to you and deep uh, questions that we might have, those types of questions could give you a false negative. We are an emotional people and uh, creatures and by that, by that, uh, a fact alone, we cannot look at our emotions or how we feel about things, uh, and especially when it comes to salvation. I would consider that if you are having these questions, uh, questioning your salvation or questioning the things, uh, in the video last week up here, uh, I'll post it there. <clears throat> we had talked about having eternal security where once we're saved, we're always saved, but we can lose that confidence or that assurance of salvation. Well, think about these questions when you are pondering that. Do I have faith in Jesus Christ alone for salvation? Or do I believe what the Bible says about salvation? And if you stay tuned to the to the end, I'll give you five areas that will help us uh, daily, giving us that assurance or confidence in our salvation. So an author puts it this way, you can have assurance of salvation when you believe that salvation is not your doing, but God's act of redemption in Christ and Jesus Christ conceived before the foundations of the world, a sacred agreement between the persons and the triune God carried out by God through the mysteries of his providence in real time. In other words, my assurance of my salvation rests in God's forgiveness of sin. My assurance rests in God. My salvation rests in God. It's not my feelings or how I look at it. Uh, it's not how, um, what I've done and not done. Even if I'm in sin, my salvation is secure. My salvation, uh, I can rest in that and I can always come back. When considering salvation and the assurance of having confidence in the specified understanding of internal security, the aspect, there are many aspects where we talked about last week about uh, uh, eternal security, where we now today, we are talking about keeping that confidence or that assurance. You know, I'm reminded of, of uh, when I was preparing for this lesson, uh, coming from the idea that my confidence is like when I go into my kids, you know, they go in and take a test for school. And I tell them that if you've studied up and if you've prepared yourself, uh, you can go into that test with confidence, knowing that you've studied, you've prepared, and you've done your part. First John 5, 10 through 13 says, He that believeth the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record God gave his Son, gave of his Son. And this is the record that God hath given us eternal life. And this is the life in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life. He hath not the Son hath not life. These things have I written unto you, that you believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, and they believe on the name of the Son of God. John 5, 39 says, Search the scriptures for you have eternal life, and they 
are they which testify of me. The assurance of salvation we need will come with confidence of the Spirit. I have the Holy Spirit dwelling within me. I accept Jesus Christ as my Savior. The Holy Spirit dwells within me. We only, uh, you can look at Ephesians 1, 13 and 14 for that. But let's look at Philippians 3, 3. It says, for, for we are the circumcision which worship God in the Spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. So if I look at my life as a Christian and I'm basing my salvation on how I feel, I, I'm looking at my flesh. I'm looking at me and what I'm doing um, when it comes to salvation. And it has nothing to do with me. It has nothing to do with 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 what abilities and what I'm doing and don't doing. It's not my acts that keep me uh, close. Um, it keeps my salvation. But it's my acts that will keep me close to God. Um, just like a, a relationship you have with your family, a relationship you have with people is the, the more time you spend with them, the closer you are and that, that bond begins to be there. I, I know there's people, you may have people in your lives that you would just, you would die for them. And you would, you have such a bond because you spent time together. I'm like that with my wife, right? We've spent 25 years together to this point, And there's just a bond that we have. We think alike uh actually we don't and sometimes anyway <laughs> just kidding um but uh, there are times when i know what she's thinking or i know what she wants or vice versa she knows what i'm thinking and knows what i want without even saying a word <clears throat> another help for uh our assurance of our salvation is letting the past be the past not allowing our minds or allow satan to use our past to keep us from having this confidence or assurance of our salvation. Philippians 3, 13 and 14, Paul brings this up. He says, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth to those things which are before, pressing towards the mark, uh, uh, pressing towards the mark of the prize of the high calling in God, uh, calling of God in Christ Jesus. So I don't want uh, to allow my past to affect how my relationship with God is. The assurance of my salvation would come with as I have my relationship with God. At the beginning of this, I mentioned the idea that um, this is something that we can do each and every day to ensure that I have a good, solid foundation, solid uh, assurance and confidence in God and my salvation. I don't believe you can lose your salvation. But I believe we can lose the confidence or the feeling uh, of salvation while it's not based on feeling. So at the beginning, I read to you First uh, Peter chapter uh, number one, verses three and four, and God has given us things, right? Um, I'm sorry, that was Second Peter. I want to read you 1 Peter 1, 3 through 5. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, according to his abundant mercy, hath begotten us again to the lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance inc uh, incorruptible, undefiled, that fadeth not away, reserved for you in heaven. Reserved. You are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed at the last time. You know, God can come in a moment, in a twinkle of an eye at the last trump, for the trump shall sound. The dead shall be raised. The dead will rise first, and we'll meet Jesus in the air, and it can happen in a moment, in a twinkle of an eye. Having salvation is having it by faith, believing. Assurance of salvation has nothing to do with how I feel, my emotions, any of my senses uh, has nothing to do with my salvation, but my trust and belief in God's word. So I, at, the, at the beginning, I promised you I'd give you five things that I think that we can look at. And it's founded in Second Peter chapter number one, where I talked about how we're, we're given, um, uh, where we are given uh, precious promises. We are given the things of God. We are given the things of God. But if you look at Second Peter chapter one and you and you scroll down to verse number nine, 
It says, but if ye lack these things, ye are blind, ye cannot see afar off, and hath forgotten that you were that that he that he was purged from his old purged from his old sins. So consider this: if if God has given me the divine power that pertains to life and godliness, and He given us exceedingly great and precious promises, this talks about in verse three and four, verses five through eight, uh, seven tells us tells us exactly what it is that we are going to be able to have to do to have this uh, so we're not blinded that we're that we don't allow life to get in our way of of what we of what we're doing in our Christian uh, uh, way of doing business there's a lot going on but I think that if we have our assurance of our salvation in our lives we we have to uh, look at God's work so I think there's five areas, five things that we can do as Christians to ensure we have this assurance of salvation. And number one, we need to believe God's word. We need to take God at his word. Uh, 1 John 5, 11 and 12 says, This is the record. God hath given us eternal life, and this is the life in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life. He hath not the Son hath not life. We have to take God at his word. We have to believe the Bible. Number two, we have to pray to God, communicate with God regularly. And I'm not, I'm not even talking about getting on your knees and praying. I'm talking about having a conversation with God by yourself. You can be in your car driving to work. You could um, be sitting in, um, with people and in your head, you're just talking to God, asking God for wisdom, asking God to help you, asking and praying and seeking God. God, what would you like me to do in this situation? Each and every situation, we, we need to go to God regularly, every single time. Matthew 6, 6 says, but, when, but thou, when thou prayest, enter thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which sees in secret shall reward thee openly. In First Thessalonians, it says, pray without ceasing. So we consider, we consider this. I want to communicate. If I want to be close to God, just like I want to be close to my wife, I need to talk to her. I need to talk to God. God is talking to us, right? He uses the Bible. This is how God talks to us. He uses the scripture to that we can be able to look at the scriptures, understand what he wants from us. But I need to communicate verbally or in my head. I need to communicate with God. God can hear me. If I'm his child, if I'm a saved person, God will hear me. Uh, number three. God has given us the strength through the power of Christ, through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. I have the strength to stay close to God, right? First um, Corinthians ten thirteen says, "There has no temptation taken you but such as common to man." But God, but God is faithful, who will suffer you to be tempted above your able, but will, with the temptation, also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. God, there are times I get tempted, and that's that's a good thing. It's a good thing to be tempted. It's a good thing to go through trials. It's a it's a strength in us as Christians. The Bible talks about it. But I but God has given us also the ability to look at that, and I can have be live victoriously. I don't have to be downtrodden about uh, what I've gone through in the past, like I said before. But I also don't have to worry about my circumstances today pressing me. Because God is there. God is helping us. God wants us to go through trials. and tr So I have, so I go back to him and look and continue to look for him. Everybody has different uh, trials. Everybody has different things. It could be a health trial. It could be uh, um, relationships. It could be finances. It could be anything. But those trials are to draw us closer to God. God gives us the strength and gives us a peace and talks about in Philippians where God gives us a peace that passeth all understanding. There's a lot going on today. There's a lot going on in our world today. But God can give us the peace that passeth all understanding. Number four, I think we need to seek God continually, continually for forgiveness. First John one nine says, "If I confess my sins, He is faithful and just to forgive me of forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness." 
I believe God's word. That means I need to live by God's word. And then if God's word is telling me to do or not do something and I break that or I go against those things, I need to go to God and ask for forgiveness. And I believe that there are times when we look at that and we can say, hey, you know what? God has really convicted me. The Holy Spirit will convict us, right? The Holy Spirit, John chapter 16, talks about how we can uh, be guided by the truth. The Holy Spirit will guide us into all truth. We need the Holy Spirit. He's going to guide us into truth, but he's also going to kind of nudge us, conviction, right? To get us on the path of truth. Sometimes we can be blinded by the relationship with our Lord because of things, circumstances. Our relationships on earth are the same. We can, you know, broken homes are because we allowed circumstances to break that relationship. And then finally, number five, and this is not an exhaustive list, but these are the five things that I found. Uh, number five, look to God for guidance in all things. Every area of your life. Right? That's the that's the mantra of our of our of our channel here. Anchoring every area of our life in Christ. Every single area of our life, we need to seek God for guidance. Latch on to the God and his principles. Latch on to the godly things of God. Of, of of what he wants for us. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust the Lord with all thine heart. Lean on lean not on your own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. God is our light to our path. And without him, we cannot. We cannot make it. Seek God for forgiveness. Seek God for guidance. Lord, what would you have me do? Should I get this new job? Should I take this new job? Should I go to school for this? Should I go to school for that? Should I? You name it. Whatever you're going through, you need to seek God for guidance. Put God in part of your life. Now, I've, I've witnessed as people who have questioned their salvation. And the very first thing I ask them, how's your Bible study? How's your devotion time? Do you seek God regularly? Do you seek God in your heart? I'm amazed at the idea, the power that devotions have in our life. I'm afraid that our relationship with God, we sometimes look at our relationship with God as a relationship with how people treat us. People are not, there are some people that are not very nice and they use us and, and then they cast us away when they're done. When God's not that way. Just like I said in the uh, video last week about eternal salvation, having eternal salvation, uh, God's not going to save me to give me away. So I, I, am, I encourage you to have that confidence in your salvation. Study God's word. Be in God's word. Pray. Be around other Christians. That you can anchor every area of your life in Christ. So until next time, I hope you have a great day. Be safe. I'll talk to you again.